Chiefs are Super Bowl champions here in Miami as they win it here in Super Bowl 54. Random Radio Weekend News. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so that you always know when we have brand new content. Make sure that you guys follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter so that you always know when we got stuff going on. Make sure you guys check out our YouTube content, all of our YouTube content, the Random Radio video shows, showcasing amateur artist videos, and the um, past weekend newses, newses, past weekend news episodes. The reaction episodes of Bory and Steve Wilkos and the special reports all up at our YouTube page right now. All right. Uh, we had a, it was a big weekend. Tons of stuff going on. Tons of stuff going on. Let's, I'm going to tell you the news that was important this weekend because you were probably busy getting ready for your Super Bowl parties. So let's jump in. Uh, first off, on Friday, the House, the Senate, voted on whether or not they would extend the impeachment trial and have new witnesses and new testimony brought in and they voted no we won't check this out as expected the democratic motion, motion to allow witnesses has been defeated close vote 51 to 49 49 to 51 two republicans voting along with the Democrats, but that was it. Mitch McConnell was able to hold his party in line in defense of the president on this key question of witnesses. Let's talk about Lisa Murkowski. Yeah, I, I think, Let ahead. me read a little bit of her statement. Yeah. And John, I, I want you to, you know, walk, there, was, there are now two Republicans who will vote in favor of, of witnesses, Mitt Romney and, uh, and Susan Collins of Maine. Lisa Murkowski will vote no, uh, which is significant. Uh, Here's what one of the things she says. Given the partisan nature of this impeachment from the very beginning and throughout, I have come to the conclusion that there will be no fair trial in the Senate. I don't believe the continuation of this process will change anything. It is sad for me to admit that as an institution, the Congress has failed. It, it has also become clear some of my colleagues intend to further politicize this process and drag the Supreme Court into it. She was she's very tough on this issue of the Supreme Court and the Chief Justice specifically. Uh, yes. Uh, the vote, the resolution, which passed 53 to 47, sets the final vote for Trump's fate on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said that it was a great and grand tragedy. Check this out. To not allow a witness, a document, no witnesses, no documents in an impeachment trial is a perfidy. It's a grand tragedy, one of the worst tragedies that the Senate has ever overcome. America will remember this day, unfortunately, where the Senate did not live up to its responsibilities, where the Senate turned away from truth and went along with a sham trial. This, if the president is acquitted with no witnesses, no documents, the acquittal will have no value because Americans will know that this trial was not a real trial. It had no witnesses, no documents. It is a tragedy on a very large scale. Yes, so the Democrats have already started their next phase of hating Trump. Let's just count down all the many ways that they've done this. They initially said that he worked with the, first they said he was unfit. That was the first, he was unfit, mentally unstable. He got a mental evaluation, found out he was fine. Then they said that he was working with the Russians to win the election against Hillary Clinton. Turned out that Hillary Clinton was actually working with the Russians to get emails on Donald Trump. And then he didn't work with them, according to the Miller Report. Turned out that didn't happen. Then they were saying he was a rapist and a racist because he said that, you know, he sent that tweet about people going back to where they came from with Elon Omar and the rest of those in the, in the squad. And then the comments about Baltimore, they was a racist then. Then when all that couldn't stick, they decided to say that he worked with the Ukraine to pressure them into giving them information about Joe Biden who was running against him. And that is why he should have been impeached. And now here we are looking like he's not. Now they're saying the whole trial was not even a trial if you don't have witnesses. But here's the problem, everybody. And I understand that you all may feel like that, but here's the problem. Who comes to court and doesn't already have their witnesses ready? That's the whole thing. 
They had 30 days that they delayed this process. The Democrats had plenty of time to call their wit to subpoena their witnesses and have them come to court. Why didn't they have that done beforehand? Why do they want to delay this longer so that they can go out and get witnesses, find people, and just make this take longer into the election year? I think they're slick. And so, you know, you also got to remember this. There are four people running for presidency on the Democratic side who are sitting there on the jury. You know they're going to vote against them. So this is really becoming a big farce and a big show. Democrats, you lost this one. On Wednesday, the president will be acquitted. On Tuesday, he has a State of the Union. You know we'll be watching. And on Wednesday, we'll see what happens when they, uh, well, we'll see what happens. It's going to be an interesting Tuesday and Wednesday. State of the Union and the acquittal coming on Wednesday. So, there you have it. It's looking good for DT45. It's looking like re-election is almost assured. Which means that all of you with investments, all of you with 401ks, your money's going to go up some more. Because as long as DT's in, we're all going to win. Uh, in Britain, they, Friday night, they finally did it. It became official. The UK is leaving the EU. Check this out. Yeah, well, uh, what changes in terms of... The country that we wake up in in the UK tomorrow, well, not really much. And in terms of business, not much changes because people and goods and data will continue to flow just as before. But that's because we enter into a transition arrangement, of course, which goes until at least the end of December 2020, the end of December of this year. So not much will change. MEPs will no longer go from the UK uh, to uh, to sit in the House, uh, to sit in the uh, in the European Parliament. So no more Nigel Farage attempting to wave his union jack, uh, jack and the like. Uh, will be taking Taking place and there won't be UK uh, participation at the European Council so we lose our seat at the table in that sense so some things are changing a commemorative coin mat has been issued uh, which uh, is going into circulation today and we are going to hear from Boris Johnson later he's aware he's addressing two different parts of the country here essentially those who voted for this and those who didn't he said he'll be mindful of that in his language he'll speak at 10 o'clock uh, this evening UK time and then at 11 o'clock UK time after a laser show and a countdown clock and Downing Street the UK will leave after 47 years and one month of membership will leave the European Union 11 o'clock this evening midnight in Brussels yes on Friday at uh, right at the mark of the new day uh, they will be officially out of the EU uh, now comes the transition period where they have approximately until the end of 2020 to negotiate all kinds of trade deals that they once had with the EU that they no longer will have and figure out how to uh, sign new treaties that were signed under the EU that the UK will no longer be um, up under. These are interesting things that will now be taking place in the EU. Uh, many of the people are happy. Some are not. Some are very upset. Uh, according to uh, Dover.gov.uk, on, the June, on June 23rd, 2016, the UK voted to leave the European Union. Nationally, the result of the referendum was that 17.4 million people, mostly 51% of the population, voted to leave. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, what is going to happen in the future will all depend on the kind of deals that they can make within the next year. They're going to need to make some trade deals. Apparently, they're trying to look to Trump. Boris Johnson is going to be looking to Trump to work out some trade deals with America and other allies like Macron in France and even maybe even China. So this will be interesting, something to keep your eyes on to see what will happen to our UK brothers and sisters. How will they fare in this difficult time that's ahead? Trying to renegotiate deals and maybe not. I mean, maybe they won't have to renegotiate any deals that will it maybe won't be hard at all. I mean, there are people who want to deal with the British economy, so we'll see. This will be interesting. Harvey Weinstein's accuser, one of his accusers, Jessica Mann, took the stand on Friday. And uh, check this out. A one-time aspiring actor says Harvey Weinstein subjected her to degrading abuse in some of the most graphic testimonies shared in his trial so far. Jessica Mann detailed a catalogue of abuse by the Hollywood producer. Three of the five charges against Mr Weinstein relate to Ms Mann. Uh, his lawyers say emails prove his 
uh, and her relationship was consensual, and he denies the charges and all allegations of wrongdoing. Yes. According to BBC.com, Jessica Mann detailed a catalog of abuse by the Hollywood producer saying he once trapped her in the hotel bedroom and raped her. Uh, Miss Mann's evidence came at the end of the fourth week of the Manhattan trial. The Oscar-winning Hollywood mogul who produced films such as Shakespeare in Love and The English Patient. The 34-year-old said that she met him in late 2012 or in early 2013 at a party. She told him that her ambition was to be an actress. Later, she said he invited her and a friend to the ho to his Hollywood, I mean his Los Angeles hotel suite. He then allegedly pulled Miss Mann into a bedroom and performed oral sex on her. Miss Mann then began a relationship with Mr. Weinstein. What 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 the hell are we talking about here? <laughs> What's let, let me let me continue. I en I entered into what I thought would be a real relationship with him, and it was extremely degrading from that point on. She said he once urinated on her. And then in 2013, he raped her in a Manhattan hotel room. If he heard the word no, it was a trigger for him. X, when asked why she stayed in a relationship, Ms. Mann said in tears, there was no short answer. One of the aspects initially was that I had a sexual encounter with him. That wasn't something I could undo. That really confused me and hurt me. She stayed with him partly out of fear, she says. Uh, okay, so one of Mr. Weinstein's lawyers said Miss Mann sent flattering emails to Mr. Weinstein during their relationship, one in which she said, Miss you, big guy. These proved the relationship was not abusive, the defense alleges. In Friday's testimony, Miss Mann also alleged that Mr. Weinstein had extreme scarring on his body and used erectile dysfunction medication. She also believed he was intersex and had appeared to have had a vagina and no text. <sighs> More than 80 women have publicly accused Mr. Weinstein of sexual misconduct. And this woman is now here talking about how his penis may not even be a penis, it may be a vagina. I, 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 I'm trying to figure out. So you're in a relationship with Harvey Weinstein. You know who he is. You know that he's as, as big of a mogul as he is. You decide to have a sexual relationship with him. When you don't get what you want out of the deal, now you're saying that he raped you, and, and to further add insult to injury, saying that he doesn't even have a penis, he may have a vagina. Calling him intersex, essentially making fun of the intersex community by ridiculing Harvey Weinstein. You guys see how the left is ridiculous? You see how ridiculous the left is? They'll even ridicule their own people that they support if it's going against somebody who they all hate. I don't believe Jessica Mann. I believe Jessica Mann, just like Asia Argento, didn't get what she wanted. So now she's out here saying that she was raped. Say, and, and even going as far as to say that this man doesn't have a penis. Well, there are many women who sucked his penis. Ashley Judd would be one. And there are many women who had sex with this man and felt his penis inside of them. Including you, Miss Jessica Mann. So while you're sitting up here ridiculing and making fun of Harvey Weinstein, figure out how you can make fun of and ridicule those emails you sent him, which I'm sure you'll say you sent them out of fear, but you were miles away from Harvey Weinstein. Jesus Christ, these people are terrible. Watch yourself, fellas. Watch yourself. Anything you do today, anything positive or negative, will definitely be used against you in the future. Very interesting. Back to DT45. How about that? Trump signed an executive order on Saturday, on, on, on Friday, uh, tackling human trafficking in America. Check this out. My administration is putting unprecedented pressure on traffickers at home and abroad, and we are freeing innocent victims at every single turn. I was proud to be the first Commander-in-Chief to attend a meeting of the President's Interagency Task Force established by the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000. In November, I was also the first President to sign an executive order to establish a task force 
on missing and murdered American Indians and Alaska Natives. Just signed it. And this has a very special focus on women and girls. That's an incredible thing that's been happening, but we just signed it. According to ABC News, January is Human Traffic Awareness Month, and on Friday, the final day of Human Traffic Awareness Month, President Trump signed an executive order expanding his domestic policy office with a new position, with a new position solely focused on combating human trafficking. The president officially announced a new position during a White House summit on the topic, organized by his daughter and senior advisor, Ivanka Trump. Uh, human trafficking is the worst that it's ever been before, Trump said, and that's because of the internet. He outlined initiatives his administration has done thus far, including the Department of Justice shutting down certain websites found to be associated with groups accused of running human trafficking rings. He added, my administrating is fighting these monsters, persecuting and prosecuting them. This is fantabulous. Fantabulous. I love it. Furthering the efforts to stop human trafficking, which happens to mostly women. So all you people who say that Trump hates women and he's a misogynist, he's not. He's out here helping you women, doing things that are, that are great for you women, that are great for all people. Stop all this human trafficking. Trying to put an end to it, we need that. And Ivanka Trump is behind it, which I love. She's a beautiful woman. And so she is trying to help our people. And I love this, man. This is great. Trump doing great things all across the board. And it, and it just doesn't stop there. He also, Saturday, signed a travel ban on Nigeria and five other countries. Check this out. Nigeria included as Trump expands U.S. travel ban list. U.S. President Donald Trump is set to slam travel ban on more countries, including Nigeria, Africa's biggest nation. Political reports that an announcement is expected on Monday, January 27th, exactly three years after Trump signed the original travel ban on January 27, 2017, just a week into his tenure. The ban was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court on June 26, 2018. It affected Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen, Venezuela, and North Korea. For the new restrictions, countries on the list include Belarus, Myanmar, also known as Burma, Eritrea, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, Sudan, and Tanzania. President Mohamed Buhari has established a committee to study and address the recent U.S. visa ban on Nigerians. The committee will be chaired by the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arabeshala. In the meantime, former presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, is unhappy about the U.S. government's decision. He has asked President Trump to consider adopting measures that individually target those in government who have failed in their duties, rather than target the entire Nigerian population. Yes. Citizens from Nigeria, Eritrea, Sudan, Tanzania, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and Myanmar will now be blocked from obtaining certain types of visas. People from those countries will still be able to visit the U.S. as tourists. In 2018, the U.S. issued twice as many immigration visas to Nigeria than to any other of the five nations combined. And officials said that the new measures were the result of failures by the six countries to meet U.S. security and information sharing standards. These countries, for the most part, want to be helpful, but for a variety of different reasons, simply fail to meet those minimum requirements that we laid out. Acting Homeland Security Secre Secretary Chad Wolf told reporters that on Friday. Uh, he also said that officials will work with the countries on bolstering their security requirements to help them get off that list. U.S. President Donald Trump first introduced a travel ban in 2017 and currently closes U.S. borders to citizens and seven countries, most of them with Muslim majorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one cares about that. Let me tell you something about, well, let me go back to the article. In 2018, the U.S. issued more than 8,000 immigration visas to citizens of Nigeria. That same year, just over 2,000 were issued to Sudanese nationals, 290 to Tanzania nationals, and just 31 to Eritreans. Well, many the Sudanese and the Eritreans are practicing slavery still. So, I don't know if we should have any of them over here until they let us know their security measures and until they update their security sharing standards. I agree with that, so don't let them in. They want, they, they want to get in here, then do the things necessary to get in here. Cut out all the silly games. And people, stop talking about it's racist. There's nothing racist about this. This is happening because of what I just told you. They failed to meet the security measures. 
they can get off this list as soon as they as soon as they update their security sharing standards. Very simple process. So if they do that, it'll be all good. I'm sure many blacks were saying, "Oh, he doing this. It's Black History Month. This what he doing to us?" Well, no, this is not what he's doing to us. He's they're doing this to themselves because they failed to update their sharing security sharing standards. That's all it is. As soon as they do that, they'll be off the list. We don't have a problem with giving immigration visas to Nigerians. We've given 8,000 in just the past year alone. So nobody is trying to restrict blacks from coming in and we're not trying to stop them. We just want them to share their security sharing standards. Yeah. As soon as that happens, it'll be all good. Trump taking control as usual, being the man. Goddamn. Saturday was February 1st, so Black History Month kicked off in the United States. Um, well, also in, in Britain. Uh, here's a little bit of black history fact. We, I have a black history fact. Here's one for you. Many, many of you may not know. Here's a black history fact for you. Well, you know, you ever wonder why so many African Americans play basketball? Well, could it be because of Edwin Bancroft Henderson? He is known as the father of black basketball, introduced basketball to African Americans in Washington, D.C. in 1904, and was Washington's first male African American physical, uh, physical education teacher, and possibly the first in the country. From 1926 until his retirement in 1954, Henderson served as a director of health and physical education for Washington, D.C.'s black schools. An athlete and team player rather than a star, Henderson bought broke both taught physical education to african-american and organized athletic activities in washington dc and fairfax county virginia where his grandmother lived and where he returned with his wife in 1910 to raise their family uh edwin Hen bancroft henderson was inducted into the nba hall of fame in 1980 i believe it was 1985 1985, he received the introduction. The speech was given by none other than NBA Hall of Famer and legend, Bill. The Thrill, Russell. I'm sorry, he was inducted in 2013. I apologize for that. 2013, I'll get to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Edwin Bancroft Henderson, he is black history, but more importantly, he is American history. So now you blacks know why blacks play basketball because of Edwin Bancroft Henderson. And if you didn't know, and if you sitting there saying, I don't give a fuck about that, that ain't nothing I want to know, then you're a heathen. And that's unfortunate because you should have cared about that because that was an awesome fact. And now you can stop saying that you own the sport and that you created it and you can understand why we play it and why we became so good at it. So for all you heathens, maybe you'll feel better when we tell you about your own heathen behavior and your own heathen folk. Because we're not all heathens, just you all are. I know that you all should have been on your best behaviors because it's Super Bowl weekend and you wanted to watch the games, you didn't want to be sitting in jail, but I do know that it was 55 degrees in Chicago on Sunday, so that means the violence must have happened maybe Sunday night, maybe Monday, who knows, here's the Heathen Report, let's find out. Police tape wrapped around the perimeter of Victory City Church after a deadly shooting across the street in Riviera Beach. We may not understand it all. Evidence markers placed along West 20th Street near Avenue F as police investigate a shooting that left a man and a 15-year-old boy dead on the street. Police say another child was shot along with a female victim. Both were taken to the hospital. Two shootings, two deaths, two injuries. Friday night was something of an anomaly in the Rogue Valley. It makes you wonder if um, if there's any place safe you can live. In Central Point, a man and a woman were found shot but alive near Live Oak Loop. The suspect had already fled the scene, according to police. Central Point police say they found their suspect late Friday evening, but according to police, the suspect was, quote, beyond help from what appeared to be an apparent suicide. While the victims and the shooter have yet to be identified in this case here in Central Point, earlier in the night, another shooting in Grants Pass occurred where the victim has been named and a suspect is in custody. Seven shootings on the interstate. That's why it's announced Operation Safe Travels 2 this week. It will st step up patrols in the interstate, on the interstate, I should say, both visible and undercover. And so we want to show you some video of those highway patrols out there right now. The Tennessee Highway Patrol has joined the effort along with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. They're going to be out there all weekend long patrolling the interstates to crack down on interstate vi violence. 
Some drivers I spoke with say these shootings and road rage incidents are sad and scary. Now an update to a deadly double shooting in Delaware County that Eyewitness News first broke to you yesterday morning. Chester police say the shooting started with the fight inside of the Sunoco A-plus market at West 9th and Curlin Streets around 4 o'clock yesterday morning. Investigators say several people attacked Losanto Saunders there and then employees chased out that crowd. Police say Tariq Doward and Saunders then shot and killed each other. Neighbors say part of the crime problem is stores in Chester that are open all night. This morning, police are searching for two suspects accused of shooting a 19 year old in the Bronx. Investigators released these images of the suspects, with one of them appearing to hold a gun. Yesterday at about 5 a.m., police say the two suspects kicked the victim's door, leading to a physical altercation with the victim, who allegedly told them they had the wrong house. It happened near West 238th Street and Walden Avenue in the Kingsbridge section. The victim is being treated at St. Barnabas Hospital, though no word yet on his condition. We knock your ass down if you capping, homie. Niggas steady bleeding, they need napkins, homie. Boy, I get down, ain't no capping, homie. That chopper hit your ass, you do a backwards, homie. Niggas say they drilling, they need practice, homie. Your bitch, man, she in it on my mattress, homie. Don't be all white, Michael Jackson, homie. We are following breaking news out of London. A man has been shot dead by police following what's been described as a terror-related incident. Now, this happened in South London's Stratton area. Emergency responders are currently on the scene. They have been treating the injured. We've got our correspondent standing by for you. Ah, heathens. You know, you know, it's just, just never fails. The ones in Chicago are doing that kind of stuff right there. Overseas across the pond, the ones in London are losing their minds. A man with a hoax device strapped to his body stabbed two people before armed officers shot him dead and streets from South London. Three people, including uh, the, stab the two stabbing victims and one who police believe was hit by glass after the police weapon fired, were taken to nearby hospitals. What the hell is wrong with this guy? What is he mad about the Brexit? So he went over there and started stabbing people? What a fucking idiot. And they put him down like the rabid animal beast he was, stabbing innocent people in London. You know what? You must be out of your damn mind. How dare you do that on the first day of Black History Month on top of that? Ridiculous. I must feel better about myself because that pissed me off. You know what? Since it is Black History Month, let's show some appreciation to black women. We've got some your boy Breeze from Mayor. He's a rapper. And we're gonna show some appreciation to black women. All month, black women appreciation. So let's kick it off with the first week of Black History Month with some black women's appreciation. Right here, Random Radio. I just put some cushion in my cigar I just do it cause this life is hard I don't even know just where we are I done got so high that I'm on Mars I'm on Mars I just put some cushion in my cigar I just do it cause this life is hard Life is hard I don't even know just where we are I'm hot where to turn up, not burn up Smoke that, let's roll out It's fire, no furnace None of that, we got a whole ounce So let's blow on, on, Only place I'm a go It's high So high, I can't even look down no more I just wanna feel the vibe And hell that vibe inside my lungs Feel that rush, let it bust Ain't no one as gone as us huh? <laughs> Got me flowing, see a sweat, only fucking with that toxic. If it's not, you can be spared. Yeah. 
They don't understand. Maybe if you smoke this shit and fall, you'd understand. I feel like another man. All that scud she got one shit, I am another man. I just put some cushion in my cigar. I just do it cause this life is hard. I don't even know just where we are. I done got so high that I'm on Mars. I'm on Mars. I just put some cushion in my cigar. I just do it cause this life is hard. Life is hard. I don't even know just where we are. I'm hot. All right. That was Black Women's Appreciation. And that was your boy Breeze from Air. Make sure you guys check out your boy Breeze from Air's music everywhere. He's always got hot music all over the place. And uh, go appreciate a black woman today. Uh, finally, the NFL, they controlled the entire weekend. We had the NFL Honors on Saturday night, hosted by Steve Harvey. Uh, MVP award went to Lamar Jackson, rightfully so. Offensive Player of the Year was Michael Thomas, rightfully so. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year, Stephen Gilmore. Uh, I don't know. I think Nick Bosa might have deserved that. I don't know. Uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Kyle Murray. I guess, okay. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Nick Bosa, definitely, definitely. Uh, Comeback Player of the Year was Ryan Tannehill. I think that's a good pick. Coach of the Year was John Harbaugh. I agree with that. Uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year, Calais Campbell, I suppose. And there you have that. The other awards were the awards that nobody really cares about. But Unstoppable Performance Player of the Year was Patrick Mahomes for four touchdowns in one quarter. And uh, Clutch Performance of the Year was the Miami Dolphins. So that happened Saturday night. Lamar Jackson was MVP. Congratulations to him. He deserved it. I think he had a great year. He definitely deserved it. But that, that wasn't the end. Saturday night, they also inducted NFL players into the, the... Well, they came out with the final listings of the NFL Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, on the list was Troy Palomalu, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Edgerin James of the Indianapolis Colts. Steve Atwater of the Broncos. Isaac Bruce of the Rams. Uh, Steve Hutchinson of the Vikings and I'm getting old because I remember seeing all of these guys play god damn also some other guys who will be going into the Hall of Fame uh, legendary coaches Bill Cowher and Jimmy Johnson as well as other players such as Jim Covert, Winston Hill, Duke Slater uh, yada 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 some other guys and you guys can catch all that in August 8th but well, they will have the Pro Hope Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony, so check that out. So congratulations to all those guys. Uh, they deserved it, and uh, it'll be a, it was a huge list, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But that all led us up to the Super Bowl, and that's what all this is leading up to with the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl was between the Chiefs and the 49ers, and boy, oh boy, did we have a game. Well, the Chiefs came out looking very st- stale. 49ers were busting. It looked like they were going to bust that ass. And then the Chiefs kept it in there, and they stayed in there, and it was very close in the beginning. It was very, very close. We uh, had some commercials. Many of, you know, I don't understand this about the Super Bowl commercials anymore. Are they still paying millions of dollars to put that on that, uh, to put those commercials on that game? Because a lot of those commercials were already on, like, YouTube and the internet before this Olay commercial here about the women making space. And I guess they want you to donate every time you buy a product, a dollar of what you buy goes towards some girl learning how to code. That's not gonna put her at NASA. So you should be paying, you should be putting a dollar towards a child, a little girl going to Cape Canaveral Space Camp. That would make more sense if that's what you really want to do to help women. But whatever, uh, this commercial happened and I felt like my rights were violated. And then uh, the halftime show happened with Shakira and J-Lo. Not bad. Uh, Shakira was out there footworking. I thought she was from Chicago. And then, uh, th- yeah, it wasn't bad. They were shaking their butts. It was looking good. Then the game finished. Chiefs won. Pulled it out after being down by two touchdowns. Pulled it out. Came back. Won. Andy Reid got his first touch, his first Super Bowl win. Mahomes has his. And I got $100. Congratulations to the Chiefs. Congratulations to the fans. 
And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Leave some messages in the comment section. Tell me what you thought about this weekend and the weekend review. Like, share this with others, and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Random Radio. Yeah, boy! You are listening.